Hello everyone. In our past video, we looked at the concept of uh, environment, wherein we looked at uh, the definition of environment, the global and local challenges faced by the environment, and various components of the environment such as biotic and abiotic factors. And uh, finally, we looked at uh, hydrological cycles, that is the water cycle. So, in this lecture, we will today look into ecosystem. When we talk about ecosystem, the first point which comes into mind is the habitat. Now, habitat can be simply defined as the place where an organism lives. It is the simplest definition of a habitat. Now, based on the habitat characteristics, they are categorized into four different uh, uh, categories. First one is the terrestrial habitat, which is nothing but the organisms which is living on the land. Then you have freshwater habitat which includes the organisms, plants and animals which lives in the freshwater. Third one is the marine habitat where the organisms that is fishes, uh, mammals, plants, algae whichever lives in the uh, seawater is called as a marine habitat. And uh, fourth one is the estuarine habitat. So, this estuarine habitat is neither a marine habitat nor a freshwater habitat. Because the estuary, if you look at the definition, is a place where a river meets the sea. So, naturally, you would have the characteristics which is in between a marine environment and that of the freshwater environment. So, the organisms which are thriving in estuarine environment are really a organisms, a set of really uh, organisms which are able to withstand extreme conditions. Because if you look at the sea, you will invariably see there is a high tide season time and a low tide uh, timing. So, what happens is during a day many such uh, cycles will come. So, during high tide the sea water comes into the river side more whereas during the low tide time the fresh water is pushed towards the sea. So, they will have fluctuation of the salinity du uh, during the day time several times. Now, if you look at uh, the structure of ecosystem which we already talked about, but little additional is there, uh, is divided into biotic that is living and uh, abiotic or non-living component. The biotic component is further divided into producers, consumers and decomposers, whereas the uh, physical environment is uh, uh, further divided into physical component and chemical components. Now, in the biotic component, there is a segment called as consumers. So, these are the organisms which would depend on the plants. Okay, That is what is called as a consumer. So, first category which comes under this one is the herbivore. These are the organisms which would feed on the plants. It can be a grasshopper, it can be a, a deer or a rabbit, anything which would come, I mean feed on the plants is called as a herbivore. Second category or strata is the carnivore. So, these are the organisms which are capable of feeding on the herbivores, non-vegetarian eating organisms. Third one is omnivores which would uh, be both herbivore as well as carnivore. And the fourth category is the detritivores. These are the organisms which would live based on the dead and decaying organisms. It can be plant, it can be a carnivore, omnivore, anything it could be, but these would depend on the dead bodies of those categories. Now, coming on to the producers. These are one of the most important components of the ecosystem. Why do we say that? Because the if you look at uh, the environment and ecosystem and uh, living uh, beings, first thing is harvesting of sunlight. So, the harvesting of sunlight is uh, done, that harvested sunlight along with carbon dioxide and water will be converted into some food material. So, naturally these producers become an important component of the ecosystem. <coughs> these uh, producers are the organisms which are capable of uh, manufacturing organic compounds from inorganic substances from their environment. So, what they will do is, they will make use of sunlight they will make use of carbon dioxide, they will make use of water and they will produce the organic food from all these components.
now the food is produced not only for themselves but for the other organisms also or in other words the other organisms also feed on the uh, primary producers <coughs> so naturally they would directly depend on the abiotic component for their survival and the production of nutrients now just imagine you deprive the producers of sunlight they cannot produce the food if you deprive the primary producers of carbon dioxide they cannot produce food if you deprive them oxygen carbon dioxide any of the component it is not possible for them to exist so all the abiotic factors are important for their own survival and production of the nutrients so <clears throat> these producers are also called as autotrophs and this word is derived from greek which is autos stands for self and trophe meaning the nu uh, nutrient or nourishment so these are the ones which are capable of producing their own nutrients the second category is the consumers these consumers are the organisms which obtain their nutrition or nutrients by consuming the other organisms so they depend on other kind of organisms for their nutrient content so these organisms are uh, formally referred as heterotrophs that is the consumers are also called as heterotrophs the word heterotroph comes from greek again heteros stands for another trophe meaning nutrients so they depend on another organism for their nutrients a heterotroph is an organism that cannot synthesize their own food material and it must obtain ready made food that is the definition or explanation for the consumer or the heterotroph and they can be herbivores they can be carnivores they can be omnivores or detritivores all of them would come under the category of consumers there are predators see these predators are the organisms that hunts and kills other organisms for their food example lions tigers sharks wolves uh, snakes uh, grasshopper i'm sorry not grasshopper um frogs under comes under this category and then there is another category called as scavengers the scavengers are the ones which would eat the food that has been killed and left by the predators so that's what is the function of these predators for example vultures raccoons hyena etc they would depend on already killed animal for their food and uh, these scavengers they play a critical role in the ecosystem because they consume the dead materials of the animals that has been left for decomposition and uh, this decomposition it is again brought about by a class of organisms called as decomposers and detritivores and they would complete the whole cycle by consuming the remains which is left by the scavengers so naturally the predators and scavengers and uh, decomposers and detritivores become a essential part of the environment now uh, let's look into a little bit more about decomposers or saprobes they are also called saprophytes or saprobes these are microorganisms which would break down the organic matter into inorganic compounds and they derive their nutrition in this process so during the breaking down of uh, uh, organic compounds they would derive their nutrition and these uh, decomposers break down the complex uh, compound into much simpler compounds but they do not eat it please remember this fact they do not eat the dead bodies what they do is they just break down the dead bodies and how do they do that they synthesize certain protein i mean uh, proteins which are nothing but enzymes which does this work let's say if you have some protein is there those proteins will be degraded into amino acids and during which they can derive their nutrition for example the fungi can grow on organic matter such as a dead tree trunk or a piece of bread and breaks down and absorbs the nutrient without eating the wood or the bread if you i'm sure you would have come across <coughs> 
somewhere uh, at home if the uh, dosa or a bread or a chapati is kept because this is coastal environment i mean uh, uh, condition humidity is high and it can easily be uh, attracting the growth of uh, the fungus those bread if it is kept or it's outside it would develop a powdery brownish uh, uh, colored material on it which is nothing but is a, a fungus so they can break down the components of the bread and by doing so they derive their energy and uh, these are the organisms that help in the composition of already dead and decaying organisms so that is the kind of you know, function which is carried out by the decomposers and uh, these decomposers they secrete enzymes to digest the organic matter and then they absorb resulting the molecules so during the breaking down of the organic matter they would naturally be broken down into smaller molecules or smaller components which can be easily absorbed by the microorganisms that is bacteria and fungi etc so that's what uh, is the function of the decomposers or the saprophytes now if you look at the feeding methods which is seen in various different in, uh, environmental conditions one is autotrophy which stands for self feeding so here you have organisms which produce their own food material from the organic molecules with the help of sunlight and then there is a second category which is called as heterotrophs or heterotrophy these are uh, the organisms which derive their energy from other living organisms so two categories auto and heterotrophy then these autotrophy or autotrophs are further categorized into a photosynthetic uh, organism and chemosynthetic organisms that is the ones which use the sunlight are called as photoautotrophs and the process is called as photoautotrophy uh, example is photosynthesis here which is carried out by the green plants the algae the phytoplanktons which are seen in the uh, marine uh, environment then then you have a second category which are called as chemoautotrophy or it's also called as chemosynthesis in the case of deep sea organism there are certain uh, chemosynthetic bacteria are there which would derive their energy from the chemicals whereas if you look at the concept of heterotrophy they can be further divided into consumers and decomposers so the consumers are the ones which would ingest the organic matter which is living or recently dead so the consumers are further divided into primary producers or primary uh, consumers i'm sorry these primary consumers would eat on the producers for example herbivores whereas the secondary consumers are the ones which would eat on other consumers such as carnivores and omnivores and uh, the second category of the heterotrophy is the decomposers that is they are the ones which would decay the dead materials and these would naturally derive their energy from non living organic matter and which are further divided into detritivores and saprotrophs uh, so the detritivores are the organisms which ingest the non living organic matter such as earthworm and uh, wood lice etc whereas the sapro uh, saprotrophs are the ones which lives on non living organic matter and they secrete certain digestive enzymes onto it and during which they would digest the materials and those digested materials will be absorbed by the organism for their energy and the classical examples for the sapro saprotrophs are the fungi and the bacteria so if you look at the environment all the organisms which you, whichever is the organism which you see on earth would and should belong to any one of these categories and you cannot find organisms plant animal bacteria fungi anything other than these categories they would somewhere or other should and would fit into this classification format okay thank you so in this uh, we, uh, lecture we looked at uh, the habitat what a habitat is and uh, what primary producer consumer then uh, decomposers those factors we looked at in this lecture